Welcome back to Start Developing Swift Your Apps tutorial series. I am Apollo from UW AppDev, the Mobile Development Club at University of Washington. Today, we're going to learn how you can define your own data model. Firstly, we'll figure out how and why we're creating a new data model. And then we're going to learn how to represent and handle the case of nothingness. And thirdly, we're going to use the tool to ensure that our program is working as intended. So let's think about the concept of meal first. For each meal, we'll have a name and a rating and optionally a photo so the user knows which meal they are talking about. And right now, we're using three separate variables to represent these three properties of a meal. Meal name, which is a string, meal rating, which is an integer, and in the future, we're going to have a meal photo, which is an image. However, when we think of it, meal is really just a single entity that we want to represent. Is there a way for us to encapsulate all three of these variables into a single thing? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to define this meal entity, and we're going to use it. So let's go back to Xcode, and we're going to create a new file. Since we're no longer handling some UI code, we're going to choose the Swift file and click Next. We're just going to save the file with all our other files, but rename it meal since we're saving meal in there. Now here, since image is part of Swift UI, we're also going to import Swift UI. So to define a new meal data model, what we're actually going to do is pretty similar to what we have been doing so far. We say struct content view. So similarly, we're going to say struct meal and the braces. Note that we no longer have the column view since the meal is not a view. So we're just going to leave it as is. And then we're going to define its properties including its name, which is going to be a string, as we have learned before. We're going to have rating, which is going to be an integer. And we're going to have a photo, which is of type image. You know, previously I have said that a user can choose to include or not include the photo. So it might have an image or not. And how do we represent that? We add a question mark after the type image to notify Swift that we may or may not have a photo. And that's it. As simple as that, we just have a struct with the name of the data model you want to define, and you include all the variables you want to associate with that data type and put them all inside the curly braces. Now let's go ahead and use our new data model in the content view.swift file. So instead of having separate variables to represent a meal, we're going to just write a single meal of type meal. And we're going to say it equals to meal parenthesis because we want to specify the name, rating, and the photo. And we're just going to say name is the same time, it's an empty meal. And we have our default rating of four. Hmm, how about photo? What do we use to represent a photo that does not exist? Well, actually in Swift, this is called nil. So basically, if you have something that's optionally there, you use the word nil to represent, oh, actually, I don't have a photo yet. So now Swift is no longer happy because we removed the other variables that represent a meal separately. How do we now access a meal's name? It's actually pretty simple. Instead of doing that, we say meal and dot. We use dot to access a property of a data model, say dot name. And uh, similarly here, we have meal dot name. And here we have meal dot rating. As simple as that, we can resume and check our program to see if it's actually looking exactly the same as before. Indeed it is. We still have our meal name, we still have our ratings. However, let's think about what's a valid meal. Can meal have an empty name like we have right now? I would say no. It will be really hard to order a meal if we don't know its name. And it will be very hard for a restaurant to figure out, huh, what did this customer order? 
if they don't have a name for each of their meals. And can we have a negative rating for a meal like negative one? Our program does not allow you to input some negative rating. So I would say we won't accept any negative ratings for meals. Now we'll go ahead and implement those checks to ensure our meals are actually valid within our program. Let's go back to the meals.swift file. How do we add checks? Actually, we cannot do it with the default constructor that Swift provides us to initialize a meal. So instead, we'll need to take care of assigning each of this variable a value ourselves. As you can see here, Swift already generated a default constructor that just assign each of our properties a value that we provide it. So we're just going to do exactly that. To do so, you see the word in int to say we want to initialize this. And we're just going to say name is of type string. We have rating of type int. And we have photo as image question mark or an optional image. Now notice we use the same name inside here, which is parameters. And we also have the same name as one of our properties. If you just say uh, we want our name to equal to the name the whoever is using our meal provides us, this is actually going to do nothing because it's not going to be able to differentiate. And Swift is not happy with that. To fix this issue, we're just going to say self.name equals to name. So what self does is it refers to one of the struct's properties here instead of one of the arguments here. So this name in green refers to this name up here, and this name in black refers to this name in argument. We're going to similarly do this for each of our other properties. And self.photo is equal to photo. After we've done that, Swift is now happy and our code compiles like it used to do now. So now let's go ahead and add the checks. Let's say if a meal's name is empty. So if you have learned some other programming languages, you might have to say if name's number of characters in Swift number of characters called count is less than or equal to zero, or rating is less than zero, we do something else. We go ahead and initialize all our properties. And what do we exactly do here? Hmm. If the user provided us with some arguments that does not make sense, what do we want to do with our meal? Well, remember this question mark or an optional value that may or may not exist. We can also do that for initializers. We just need to add a question mark here to represent that, hum, this initialization process may or may not succeed. And inside here, if the parameter a user provided us does not make any sense, we're just going to say return nil to say that if this happens, our constructor cannot provide you with a valid meal with all these properties. Instead, we're going to give you nil to indicate that hmm, no such meal can exist. And just another thing that computer scientists like to do is if you can guarantee that your if branch is going to end and do nothing else, we can safely remove this else statement and let everything out. So we can save a level of indentation. Everything looks nice. Because in the if branch already returned a new, it's not going to go ahead and do any of the following lines. And just a quick thing, since the photo by default is going to be nil, we can actually just say that by default, photo is going to have the value nil. And then we can safely remove this photo nil from our constructor, and our program is still going to run as usual. However, there's one additional thing that's happening, because now, meal is optional. We may or may not have a meal from this. And in this case, we're actually not going to have a meal because the name is empty. So instead, we're going to say meal should be initialized with the default name, which is untitled meal. And since we know that 
we're definitely gonna have a meal. We can say exclamation mark and force unwrap the optional, saying that I guarantee you, Swift, it's okay. I know we are gonna have a valid meal from this constructor. However, be cautious when you are using the exclamation mark, because if the optional value you are trying to unwrap is actually new, your program is going to crash. So think twice before you use an exclamation mark to unwrap any optional value. To better understand what optional value you can trust and what are some other data you cannot trust, there's a great talk from WDC18 about this topic, and you should check it out. Now, to ensure our constructor, this int, that I told you is going to fail if the user provides us with some name or rating that's not making sense, it's going to fail. Just me telling you should not convince you it actually does that. So what we're going to do is going to write some tests. So when we're creating the project, we actually create a unit test for this project. And we're going to open the food tracker test.swift file. You're going to see some template methods in here. We don't really care about them. We're going to remove all of them. But pay attention to this line of code, that says func test. You notice that there's this little triangle at the left that you can run this function to test our thing. Let's click that. After a while, you're going to see that test succeeds and you will have a green check mark next to it. So basically, whenever you see func test something, that is a piece of code that's going to be run by Xcode and it's going to test whatever is inside it to make sure our program is working as intended. So now it's just going to delete all of them and we're going to write our own tests. So func, let's say test meal initialization succeeds. These are the cases that we know our meal initializer is going to work. So we know that a meal with rating of zero should work. We're just going to say variable meal zero is equal to a meal that has a name, let's say zero and a rating of zero. And because this should work, we're going to head and say xat assert not new and say meal zero to check it's actually not new. We have an actual meal from the constructor. You can see now that Swift is not quite happy with our code here. It says variable meal zero was never changed. Consider using let instead. So basically let is just another way for you to declare variables. But if you say let, it ensures that that variable cannot be changed. So for example, here we have var meal. That is why we are able to change its name. We're able to change its rating. However, here, since we're not changing any of the meal's properties, we can go ahead and use the keyword let instead of var to declare a variable that's not going to change. And it reads naturally, let meal with a rating of zero to be this meal with name zero and rating zero. And we're going to go ahead and add another meal that's going to have a rating of five. Meal five equals to meal. And our left parenthesis, I'm going to choose this how about this one? We're going to have a name that's called 5 and have a rating of 5. And it's going to have, again, Neo as its photo. Just a reminder, you can use Neo to represent something that's optional and not present. And again, we can see that Neo 5 is optional. So we're going to assert it's not Neo with XCT assert not Neo. And we're going to say Neo 5 should not be new. So if we run the test now, this should succeed. And indeed it does. And now let's check our initializer actually fails when you should. So we're going to add another func test. And we're going to say test meal in initialization fails. In this case, we'll have meal with an empty name. It goes to meal. We're just going to pass an empty string. Rating, let's just make sure it does not interfere with our checking logic. We're going to pass it something like a 1 or a valid rating. 
And in this case, we want to assert it's actually nil. So we say xt assert nil instead of not nil. Empty name. And let's say a negative rating for meal. I'm going to say negative. Yeah, we'll pass a negative rating of, let's say, negative 5. How about that? It really can be any negative number. So again, in this case, we want to make sure it's nil because it's invalid parameter. And we say negative rating. We want to ensure it is nil. Oh, and I remember our rating only has five stars, so it's impossible to have a 10 star review. Let's just test that. Meal. Let's call it six stars and have a rating of six. I think this should fail us, right? Because it really have too much stars associated with that meal. And I don't think that makes sense. So now let's check if this test actually succeeds. And the answer is no, because currently our initializer does not return nil when we have meal that has a rating of six. We just checked if it's negative or not. So let's go back and change our meal to handle the case when rating is actually higher than max possible. Though we can go ahead and add another check here. I feel like this is really crowded and we should separate out. So I'm gonna say, if our name is empty, I'm gonna return new here. And if rating is less than zero, or if rating is greater than five, I'm gonna return new. So great, we have now checked for all cases that we should return nil. However, Swift provides a stronger way to ensure that if some precondition is not met, you must do something to handle it. And we can do that using guard statements. So guard statement allows you to check for some preconditions. So instead of we say name.count is less than equal to zero, we want to really see name should not be empty. So name.count should be greater than zero else we're going to return nil. And let's just quickly see that what happens if we don't return nil here. Swift is going to complain that guard body must not fall through, so we must do something catastrophic in here, which is return nil in this case. And for rating, instead of seeing what we have right now, we should say guard, it should be in this range of 0 to 5, just like what we have been doing in rating stars control, and you should really contain our rating, else we return nil. Or if you don't like this, you can always also say our rating should be greater than or equal to zero, and it should be less than or equal to five. These two ways of writing this are exactly the same, it's just your own preference. And I just want to show you different ways to write the same statement. However, here we see name.count is greater than zero. There's actually a better way to represent this idea. What we want to do here really is to check if this name string is empty. And surprisingly, strings actually just have a property called is empty. So we can just say if the name is not empty, I know this is confusing, we're using exclamation mark again, but for some condition you are checking inside if or guard statement, adding an exclamation mark in front of it means not. So we're really saying here guard the name is not empty, then we proceed. Otherwise, we're going to return nil because the name is empty. So now we have revised this part, we can go ahead and go back. Just click this one with a class. It's going to run the entire test suite. And hopefully, yes, our tests are passing now. So as a summary, today we have seen how you can create a new structures to define your own data model, how you can add properties to your data model to associate with that idea, and how you can write your own initializer instead of using the one that Swift provides you by default. We have seen that how you can use optionals 
and use new to represent that this thing does not exist, and how you can convert your initializer to be failable and return new instead of constructing the data model if the user provides you some data that's not gonna work. And then we have seen how you can use control flows like using if, if else, or guard else to check for the conditions. And we have also seen how you can write unit tests using exit test to ensure that your program is working as you expect it to. To really ensure that you actually understood the concept instead of just listening through our contents, we feel like providing you with some thoughts or actual code experiments may help you better grasp the ideas of what we talk about. So as the homework, you don't have to do them, but we strongly encourage you to, is that you can define a data model for the concept of student. We suggest you to include properties like student ID, their name, and a photo. You can go ahead and add other properties that belong to a student. And I know the concept of optional is really hard to grasp when you first encounter it. I had a lot of trouble understanding the concept of optionals. So let's think about this weird situation. Our meal initializer currently checks to see if the name is empty. And if the name provided is empty, it's gonna return meal for that meal. And we have used exclamation mark after meal constructor to force unwrap it because we are very confident that the meal we constructed will not be new at any time. However, we are able to edit the name of a meal when we delete every single character inside the input text box for the meal's name, our program actually does not crash. You can run the app right now and check if that's the case and ensure you it is. You might find it strange. How is our app not crashing? This will be an interesting question to figure out. So if you have any questions about the lectures or if you want to check with us about your homework, please feel free to email us at appdev at uw.edu or contact us through other social media platforms we have listed on our website, uwapp.dev, and see you next time.